European stock markets are trading higher this morning with the UK's FTSE 100 index up about 0.2%, while the Euro stocks 50 index is higher by 0.8%. Uh, in Germany, the DAX is also doing very well. It is up, again, up, up around about 1.1%. Uh, while in the currency space, the Euro is also doing better against the dollar. It is at that 134 level. <coughs> in peripheral bond markets, both Spanish and Italian bond yields are also relatively uh, calm and easing from, uh, from, from, from previous levels. Good morning. I'm Mr. Aksadiki and welcome to another Daily Market Bite. I'm going to give you a quick idea of what's going on in stock markets today. Uh, we've had two uh, data points out from uh, the, the developed uh, European nations, <coughs> starting off with um, the German IFO uh, figure, which was much better than expected. The third uh, consecutive rise for uh, the IFO. Um, strong number. Germany's uh, DAX index bounced on top of that, uh, on the back of that number, and it, um, it, it goes in line with the strong uh, ZED, ZEW number that we saw uh, earlier this week, uh, and refeeding some of those hopes that, uh, that were lost recently about the German economy and the fact that the German economy is in much better shape than uh, we may have previously thought. That kicked up the euro uh, much higher than, uh, than, than, than yesterday's level, even though the euro has been strongly supported uh, over the last few days against the dollar. Um, in terms of what we had out of the UK, we had our fourth quarter GDP numbers. They, it was a contraction uh, of 0.3%, which is uh, much worse than expected, around about 0.1%. Um, now, the, actually over, the overall figure, um, admittedly had some of the unwinding effects from the Olympics. Um, the third quarter GDP figure uh, was quite stunning, uh, again distorted on the back of the Olympics and the Paralympics and the Jubilee weekend. Um, so this was more of a, a smack to reality for um, the UK economy. The fact that we're still struggling out here and we're going to be going through a low growth period for um, the, the, the next year. Um, if the UK registers a recession in the first quarter of 2013, that would mean that we are entering a tri triple dip recession at the moment right now it's just a, 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 a dip into uh, the negative side so um, it didn't impact uh, the FTSE 100 given that the FTSE 100 is so strongly supported by mining and chemical and industrial shares which are, have global uh, footprints around the world however I'm um, standing on a smacking on the back of that uh, so going into um, next week uh, session we're gonna uh, keeping keep our eye on uh, the BOE uh, and see what the Bank of England has to say about the, the recent uh, turmoil in the UK economy and if this means that they're going to start uh, stimulating um, uh, the, the economy with more uh, policy measures. Um, now sticking to what's going on in uh, the Eurozone, uh, we've had Mario Draghi speak at Davos and um, he's kept his uh, kept a similar tone as to what he said previously that he believes that the, uh, the European economy will, will struggle for the next six months but we should see a uh, the, the Eurozone coming out of a recession in the, you know, in the latter half of the year. Um, in terms of what's going on with European banks, interestingly we've had the ECB reveal their LTRO um, details and, and how many banks are repaid back the, the, the money that the ECB lent out to them uh, during the operation. It was much higher than expected. Uh, banks actually uh, gave back more than uh, markets um, were, were expecting by, by a large amount, over, over around 40, 40 billion dollars worth. Um, sorry, 40 million dollars worth. Um, so, um, on the whole, it's been very positive for banks, uh, and investors are taking heart in the fact that uh, banks may be in a much better shape than we previously thought. Um, now, going on to uh, the rest of the session, we have more earnings out from the US, um, and that would be um, the main focus. Um, otherwise, we are going to be wrapping up uh, the, the day on a risk-on tone and look ahead for the, the looking ahead for next week. We're going to get more data, uh, and we're probably going to get those US GDP numbers, which will be keeping most of uh, most investors on. the back for given the fact that we might see some negative impact on, on the, uh, uh, the, the pending fiscal cliff issue that grip markets before the year ended in 2012. Anyway, thanks for watching your Daily Market Bite. Tune in for another one on uh, Monday and have a good weekend.